Let's imagine we had a rectangle with width x and height y. The area of the rectangle is then x times y, of course. Now let's let the length of the rectangle be a function of time. So we imagine that the length is shrinking or growing with time, but that its height is fixed. So in this case, we say the area is x of t times y. And what we want to calculate is the instantaneous rate of change of the area. The instantaneous rate of change of the length is the derivative of x, x prime of t. The instantaneous rate of change of the area would be a prime of t. Since the height of the rectangle is fixed at y, the rate of change of the area is just the rate of change of length times the height y. How much does the area change in a tiny time interval delta t? If we imagine that these rates of change are fixed during this time interval, the time interval is small, then to calculate how much the area changes, we just need to multiply the rate of change by delta t. So the change in area, delta a, would just be the rate of change, a prime of t, times the interval delta t. And given that a prime of t is x prime of t times y, this is just equal to x prime of t y times delta t. So here we imagine the picture. The amount that the length changed is the amount delta x, which is x prime times delta t, the rate of change of length times the time interval. So the amount that the area changed is this shaded rectangle. So the idea is that this is a good approximation for small delta t. Let's imagine for a second that we forgot what the derivative of a prime of t was. But all we knew was that for the small interval delta t, the amount that the area changed was this delta a. How can we get the derivative back from delta a? Well, the derivative is this rate of change. So we can get that the derivative is approximately equal to the amount of change, delta a, divided by the time interval in which that change occurred, delta t. And this is approximately equal to, well, take this quantity here and divide by delta t, and we get x prime of t times y. Which, of course, we get back the expression we started with. To be precise, we need to take the limit as delta t went to zero. But we're not trying to be precise right now. In this calculation, the height of the rectangle is fixed at y, and the width of the rectangle was allowed to vary as a function of time, x of t. We can repeat the same calculation when the width is fixed at some number x, and we allow the height to be variable function y of t. In this case, the derivative of the area will be equal to x times the derivative of y. And in a small time interval, delta t, y will have changed by the amount y prime of t times delta t. And the change in the area is illustrated by the red rectangle, where the change delta a is x times y prime of t times delta t. These are the two easy cases. What happens when we allow both the width and the height to change as a function of time? Now the area is x of t times y of t. And as before, we want to find the instantaneous change in the area, the derivative of a, in terms of the instantaneous rate of change of x, x prime of t, and y, y prime of t. Let's approach this question the opposite way we did above. Let's start with looking at how the area changes in a small time interval delta t. In the time interval delta t, x changes by the same amount as before. The change in x delta x is x prime of t times delta t. Similarly, y also changes the same as it did above. The change delta y is y prime of t times the time interval delta t. Now, by how much does a change? Well, it changes by the green rectangle as before. 
we'll call it delta A1. Delta A1 is x prime times y times delta t. And it changes by the same red rectangle as we had before. We'll call it delta A2. Delta A2 is x times y prime times delta t. So delta A1 is due to x changing, and delta A2 is due to y changing. But we see there's one more piece we have to worry about. And this is the cyan rectangle in the upper right hand corner. The cyan rectangle is the change in A due to the fact that both x and y are changing at the same time. We'll call this delta A3. Delta A3 is x prime times y prime times delta t squared because it is delta x times delta y. This cyan rectangle has width delta x and height delta y. So the total change in area in time interval delta t, call it delta A, is the sum of these three changes. Delta A1 plus delta A2 plus delta A3. So we need to add up these three terms. We get that the total change in area is x prime times y times delta t plus x times y prime times delta t plus x prime times y prime times delta t squared. Our goal, though, isn't to determine this delta A, but to determine the derivative A prime of T. The derivative is the change delta A over the change in time delta T. But we really need to take the limit as delta T goes to zero. In this case, the limit is going to be important, so let me write it here. If we divide delta A by delta T, We'll cancel out all these delta t's, except for this last delta t on the third term. So now what happens when you let delta t go to zero? Well, the first two terms are unchanged, but this last term is going to go to zero as delta t heads towards zero. So in the limit, the third term disappears. And the derivative is x prime times y plus x times y prime. It turns out we just need to add the derivative from x changing to the derivative when y changes. The term that comes from both x and y changing at the same time goes away in the limit when delta t goes to zero. So the area of the cyan rectangle goes to zero much faster than the other two rectangles in the limit. We summarize our results with the product rule. The derivative of a product, x of t times y of t, which we can write as x of t times y of t prime, is equal to the derivative of x times y, or x prime of t times y of t, plus x times the derivative of y, which we can write as x of t times y prime of t. We can also write the product rule in differential notation. We could say that d dt of x times y is equal to dx dt times y plus x times dy dt.